and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where today we're going to be trying to solve a puzzle that has had an absolute boatload of recommendations over the last couple of weeks. It's called Someday We'll Meet Again, and it's by 2 to 10th. And these yellow lines in the grid are so-called NABNA lines, these lines that can't contain any consecutive digits. Um, I think the constraint was invented by Zetamath, might be wrong, um, but basically everyone says that there will never be a better NABNA puzzle than this one. It's, it's, uh, it's had a 100% rating on Logic Masters Germany for, since it came out. And I thought I would just show you some of the comments um, uh, uh, on the puzzle there. I mean, everybody's just saying, well, a Agent says this is only two out of five difficulty, um, but it's got five out of five difficulty on Logic Masters Germany. So I think Agent is an outlier. Um, DDX1, the best NABNA I've solved so far, hands down. I freaking love this puzzle, says Crazy Cryptic C. Um, Fool on Hill, amazing puzzle in execution as well as concept. Um, and then Playmaker says it's stellar. Although I did notice that Playmaker also says that I found the resolution towards the end quite brutal, which is a bit of a daunting comment. Um, but anyway, as I say, we've had we've had loads of emails about this one, basically insisting that I have a go at it. So I'm I'm going to try for you. It might be a long video. Uh, for that, I, I apologise in advance, but I'm looking forward to tackling it. It's obviously something very, very special indeed. Um, now, what news do I have for you today before we kick off? I'm going to say um, thank you, actually, to one of our viewers, Glyn, um, who has, has who learned to, to paint in acrylic um, uh, during COVID. And has has been painting me from a picture from from uh from i think i think he snapped a picture off the channel oh it's just just incredibly incredibly skillful and presumably only been doing it uh, for a relatively few number of years so glenn thank you very much for sending that i was touched by that um Maverick's just taken off. <laughs> Speaking of people who touch me in different ways, um, well, they're, they're, here he comes now, about to buzz past the window, so apologies if you hear any plain noise. Um, I've got a couple of birthdays to do today. I'm going to start off with Anne, and I know it's your birthday today because your daughter Kim, at least I think it's a daughter Kim, I suppose Kim Kim can be a, ma a man's name as well. Kim Philby comes to mind. Um, uh, a sort of nefarious character from British history. Um, but um, I think it's your daughter, Kim, wrote to us. Um, and, and, and t well, she told me that when the family gets together, you always insist on putting on a recent solve from the channel that you've enjoyed. I love that, Anne. So thank you for doing that. Um, and I hope you have a brilliant birthday today with, of course, chocolate cake. And also, Hubert, it's your birthday today. And I know this because your partner, Maxus, wrote to us. And apparently, Hubert, you watch every day as well. So enjoy your chocolate cake today. I'm sure you're going to be having that. Um, and the only other thing to mention, of course, is over on Patreon, we've got our brand new Patreon reward. Uh, the closing date to win the competition is the 20th of September. Do have a crack at it if you can. Um, seven puzzles in all, loads of entries coming in every day uh, and a chance to win some brand new merchandise that that we've been uh, talking about. This, this CTC hat with the CTC hexagon right there in its center. Um, and um, that's that's all the news. So let's have a look at the puzzle. I'll read you the rules. It won't take long, actually. Um, so what we've got is normal Sudoku rules apply. Gold lines are NABNA lines, i.e. they cannot contain repeated digits and no two digits along a line may be consecutive. So that means if you put a two on that line there, nowhere along this line can you put a one or a three. Um, because obviously if you put the one there, they may not be adjacent in terms of they're not in the same cell, but they're on the same line. They are consecutive. And that is a uh, uh, in terms of family fortunes. Is, there, is family fortunes called the same in America? I have a feeling it's not. Uh, it maybe doesn't even have the same noise. But for, 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 for British folk who are watching this, they will recognize the noise. Uh, uh. In fact, while I think of it, one of the funniest, you know, you know, those viral emails that used to do the rounds 
which sort of said um you know they could they could be about anything but one of the funniest i ever got was was incorrect answers on family fortunes um so i don't know if that's still available but if it is find it and watch it it's very very amusing um right what else are the rules uh, any two lines that cross each other will each proceed straight through the intersection right okay so there are a few lines crossing each other but it, it looks fairly obvious to me how they move i think i think we're just ruling out the possibility of i don't even know if i can draw this maybe i can't it's so ludicrous that the software won't even let me draw it yeah but sort of something that comes in there and then turns that way is clearly not the way one would expect the line to line to move and the instructions just making that absolutely clear and the inequality points to the smaller of the two digits it separates okay so that digit is lower than this digit here is lower than that one uh, and that's all the rules so do have a go at the puzzle the way to play as usual is to click the link under the video but now i get to play let's get cracking and for a five star puzzle i'm really pleased to say i can start this immediately and that's because of this line here, which is a very unusual, um, it's a very unusual length of line in terms of Nabna lines. It's five cells long. And because we're only selecting the digits from one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, the Sudoku digits, the only way we can keep these um, uh, sort of non-consecutive is if we select all the odd numbers. So they're all odd. They're all even. I may be... I was... One, I mean, I don't think this is going to be a parity puzzle, is it? I think let's establish whether it's parity before I start shading this. Um, right. Okay, so I was just looking at the rules again then. And the rules do say that um, digits can't repeat along lines. And that means that we can say something about the bottom of this sort of pair of shears that we've got going on here. Because... If we look at these two digits, well, these clear, because they can't repeat on their line. So let's imagine what this digit is. It's not the same as those digits because that would cause a repeat on the line. It's not the same as these digits by Sudoku. So that digit is odd. And the same applies to all of those digits on the bottom of the sphere. Oh, is the, sh the sphere? The shears um, or scissors. Let's call them scissors. The bottom of the scissors there. Um, so these are odd. These are even. Um, so there's got to be some even digits on this one. And, okay, now I'm stuck. Uh, unsurprising. What do we know about... Um, as Maverick buzzes past again. It's, it's quite weird. So, so which I mean, even digits are very powerful in terms of Nabna lines. Well, so it's the same as middly odd digits, I suppose. But because even digits are by their nature in the in a, in the middle of the sequence, they can't be ones and nines. Is what I mean. If we imagine the sequence of one to nine laid out before us, when you when we think of an even number, it's always in the middle of the sequence, and therefore from a Nabna perspective, it's always knocking out two digits. So one thing I'm just thinking about is where does two go here? I don't know. But whichever line two is on, it's knocking out one and three from, from the bottom of the scissors. And the same is true, obviously, of eight. So eight is knocking out seven and nine. Six is knocking out five and seven. So if you put a two here, these squares are from five, seven and nine. So Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Let me think about that for a moment. So how... Yeah, that doesn't work. Right, that's very strange. Um, <laughs> actually, this is a common thing with Nabna lines. I find these completely counterintuitive. I don't know why. Normally, with like rem bands, which obviously is Nabna spelt backwards, or 
yeah, Nabna is Remban spelled backwards is probably a, a more accurate way of describing it. Rembans, they feel much more intuitive to me. I, I like Renban lines. Nabna lines, I just find them weird. I just find them weird. Like, is, should it be obvious that you can't put five on these lines? To me, it's, it wasn't obvious at all. I was sort of thinking through the possibilities. But... But, but, it, but it is true. But that, let, let's sort of go through it slowly. Let's just make, imagine this is a two. Now this line can't have one or three on it. So we're only select, we're selecting from two odd digits here. But imagine one of these digits that we pick is five. Because the other digit we're then going to pick is seven or nine, whichever of seven or nine it is, it knocks eight out. And five obviously knocks out four and six. So there'll be no possible possible fill for this square, um, which is odd in in the extreme. But that's that. Well, it's also useful because that means this is a sequence. Well, it's not a sequence at all. It, but it, there's no five, which means that this is a quadruple. So if you put two here, well, well, also. For what it's worth, if you put two here, wherever you put two, it has high digits underneath it in terms of the odd digits. So if you put two there, because you can't put one or three on the Navna line now, that has to be seven, nine. But in being seven, nine, it knocks out six and eight <laughs> from this square. So if that's two, that's four. So two and four are a pair in this uh, at the top of the scissors. And six and eight are a pair at the, at the top of the scissors. And two and four go with high odd numbers. And six and eight go with low odd numbers. And now... Oh, so now, now what? We can't put five on this line. No. Okay, so five goes here in box four is what I'm seeing now. And the, the way I've seen that, and this again is probably peculiar, the way I see that is I say, okay, well, if I put five on this line, I can't put four or six on the line. And I've only got one cell then to put four and six into in the box. And that is not a Schrodinger cell. So I can't put five on the line. So five goes here. These are all even digits now, two, four, six, eight. I'm sure there was almost certainly a very sensible way of proving that probably at the start of the puzzle, um, but I didn't spot it. This is the problem with relying on my brain live. Um, so now, now what are we doing? Now five in box seven, can't repeat on its own line. So five is in one of those squares. And if five... Well, five stops four and six being on a line with it. Every every cell in this box is nabnered. So four and six are not here. So if we did put five on the three cell line, then four and six would have to be in two of those four cells. And if that's four, six, that's two, eight, that's four, six. That's, oh, I was about to say that's impossible, but it's actually not impossible. I was about to say that's going to break this line at the end of row six, but it doesn't, does it? Because, because if you can't put four, five, or six on that line, you can still put one, three, and seven, and nine from the other side, and that will, well, none of those are consecutive, so these would both be even. Um, okay, so what we should do is, so this in this column, I've had four odd digits, two even digits. So this has got two even digits on it and one odd digit. <laughs> I, 
I, I, the other thing, I'm just going to say this while it occurs to me, and I'm feeling frustrated about the by Nabna lines, is that I, I think that there is a way, and it's probably quite a simple way, of thinking about Nabna lines, but I don't know what that way is. So I suspect that for a length four line, say, I should be able to articulate to you some secret about Nabna lines but the you know I think the best I could say is that on a four cell Nabna line you must have one of the digits one two and three that must be true because if you're trying to pick four digits from a sequence of six digits you are going to cause a repeat but I don't I don't think I can say anything stronger than that which is weird because a four cell line is nearly it would feel it was nearly a five cell line which is totally forced and yet what you you lose one length of line and i don't seem to be able to to, to, to tell you anything very useful about a four cell nabna line you know uh, I mean, from a constructing point of view, it looks like these are the next places that we'd... Either, the, either it's something to do with five down here, or it's perhaps this little arrangement. That that looks constructed. I, I, I don't know what I mean by that. Well, I, I sort of do. I mean, it's like this. That doesn't... That looks like something the constructors put in, you know, at a midpoint of a solve. Whereas this looks that looks very very beautiful and like a pattern that i can imagine two to tenth uh in his tower thinking about um you know the, the way that this actually works it's a very natural thing to examine this feels like it's doing something this not so much this not so much that No, I don't know. I don't know. Um, okay, so come on. What is it? Why? Why do we? This line hasn't got five on it, right? So this line has two low digits and two high digits on it. What do I mean by that? Well, if if you imagine the digits one to nine laid out in front of you and you chop the five out of the middle. Well, that then, in order to have non-consecutive things, we're going to have to pick two of the digits, one, two, three, and four, that are not consecutive, and two of the digits, six, seven, eight, nine, that are not consecutive. You could never pick three from one side, could you? You'd always end up with a problem. So there are two low digits on this and two high digits. But that's, that's, uh, that's such a weak conclusion. Um, or is it, um, no, hang on, maybe it's more to do with the fact that one side of this was, one of, oh, oh yeah, hang on, when we looked at this before, we said that one side of this had to be 2-4, didn't it? And two, okay, yeah, so two, ah, ah, I don't know what that does, but okay. Uh, one thing I've just thought of is that let's just let me just highlight that for a minute. Let's highlight that. Um, if this was two four, we said that this had to be seven nine, but then this is going to be one three, and this is going to be six eight, which means that one this stripe is either a complete set of low digits it's, it's one two three and four or it's a complete set of high digits um sorry i realize i've just stopped talking i'm just trying to understand whether that's useful or not so if these were all low That's going to mean 
these digits. Yeah, you see, that is in that is interesting. That is interesting. Um, how on earth do you pencil mark this? I don't. I'm not sure. But what, one thing I'm just thinking, all I was thinking of is imagine that was one, two, three, four. If that's one, two, three, four, then these squares have to be selected from seven, eight, and nine only the, because we can't put six on the line because it's got a five on it. So if these were one, two, three, four, this is seven, nine, which would make this seven, nine. Yeah, okay, so perhaps what we're meant to do. I'm not sure. I'm actually going to shade in these dominoes as well, because what I can now see is that if this is low, this is 7, 9, which is going to be the same as the blue digits. So that is the blue digits. Let's just do it the other way around. I think it's I think it must be the same. It must be the same because the way that Nabna lines work is they don't tell you about the quantum of digits, do they? They don't. All all Nabna lines do is tell you about the spacing between digits. They don't tell you about the size of digits. Ah, uh, 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 yeah, ah, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So in fact, I've now realised why that's there in the grid. That is there. Yeah, well, yeah, imagine that wasn't there. That's quite an interesting thing to think about. Yes, I know, I know. Never, ever, ever seek me out at a party. It will never go well. It would be one of the worst evenings of your lives. But um, <laughs> the things I find interesting are to think about it, whether that's missing from this puzzle. Because if it is missing... We've got a whole series of lines in the grid that are going to tell us about the spacings between digits. And we're going to end up with a mapping in the grid. Um, but what tells us? What tells us the ordering of the digits? Nothing. Nothing, because, because the Nabna lines are not saying anything about the highness or lowness of digits. So what I mean by that is you could just switch... Um, you could, the puzzle would have at least two solutions, is I suppose what I'm saying, if that wasn't there. Because you could fill it in with one being a low digit. Oh, sorry, is that a, is that a wasp? Mm, might be. Um, hopefully it will fly out. Um, yeah, you could fill it in with... Like, well, we could fill it in assuming that was 2, 4, for example, and this was 1, 3. That would be totally fine. And I think if this wasn't here, the puzzle would work. But we could fill it in just as easily with this being 6, 8 and this being 7, 9. And the puzzle would still work. So I think what the, because the lines are just telling us the spacings between the digits and for, for, so that so the lines don't understand the difference between ones and nines. That is what I'm going to tell you. These lines do not understand the difference between ones and nines. I believe. Um, so anyway, where was I going with that thought? <laughs> I can't remember now. Yeah. So, oh, yes. No, I know why I wanted to say that. But it's because what was occurring to me is that there should be, if if I'm right about that, I made the assumption that this was 1, 2, 3, 4. And I said, well, if it was 6, 7, 8, 9, it will be exactly the same logic, i.e. blue will have to end up here. So let's go through that in our minds and confirm it's true. So if this is 6, 8, obviously this can't have 7, 9 on its line, so it has to be a 1, 3 pair. But if this is 6, 8... Because this is 1, 3, this is 7, 9. So this is 6, 7, 8, 9. Now this line can't have any high digits on it at all. And it can't have 4 on it because it's got 5 on it. So it has to be made up of a 1, 3 pair. And that's the same as blue. So, yeah. So, so the, lines, the lines are agnostic about highness or lowness. The, the lines don't understand things. They understand spacings. That's all they understand. So this is blue. So it's 1, 3, 7 or 9. Let's put that in. 
So, right, I've got a digit. <laughs> <laughs> a long a long winded way of getting that digit to be five, which is now true because it, it can't be it's odd and it can't be one, three, seven or nine. And five of course is the is the ambiguous digit in the sense that um it sits in the middle of a sequence. That's that's all the Nabna lines are able to tell us. So now or okay, now we know that is not five and we know that's even. Um, and probably we can work out what colour it needs to be. It's going to be green, isn't it? So that's a green coloured even. And that's a green coloured even. So that's a purple coloured even. That's something there. Right, so one one of these is one of these is high and one of these is low. By which I mean one of them is from the two four pair which is one of these, don't know which one, and one of them is from the 6-8 pair. So one of these is high and one of these is low, which means there must be a high and low. Even, there must be a high and low even digit on this. Um, can, does that mean I know something? That is orange, is what we know. So there is an orange down here. And wow, I don't know. I'm struggling to see. Um, I'm struggling to see what this means. I have to tell you. So this line contains orange, which is <laughs> which is. And then it just depends what the size of orange is. So orange could be one, could be one of one or three. So you can't put, ah, uh, so you can't put. No, that's not true. What I was about to say is not true. I was about to say you can't put two on this line, but that's not true because if orange was from the seven nine pair, then then we'd be knocking eight off this line. Golly, this is this is very peculiar. Um, maybe so. There's got to be. There's a green and a purple on this line. Ah, ah. All right. Let's think about it a different way then. So because. Because this line definitely contains a green, it contains this green by Sudoku. So there's a green down here, and we don't know we don't know what green is. It's either two, four, or six, eight. Um, well, it's, it's from either one of those pairs. This is very confusing. But it's also got purple on it, which is again, we don't know what it is. But but the point I wanted to make is that. This line has definitely does have a two or a four on it. it. Has one of those, and therefore it doesn't have a three on it, does it? Because whether it is two or four, um, that's coming from purple or green, it can't have three on it because three would be consecutive with both two and four. And by the same token, because we know that there's a um, one of six and eight on this line. You can't have seven on it. So this this line doesn't have three or seven on it. And that means three and seven have to be at the top of the grid. And that means that square is not three or seven. That is a one or a nine. And that means that this line at the bottom has an extreme digit on it. But again, but these Nabna lines don't understand that. They don't, the, 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 the Nabna line is never going to tell us whether this line has one or nine on it. They, because they can't, 
they don't understand the difference between ones and nines. For as far as Nabna lines are concerned, ones and nines are the same thing because they're just, you know, they're, they're extreme digits. If we counted from, if, 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 if the world counted with nine as the lowest digit in Sudoku, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, was going low to high, the Nabna line, the Nabna lines would treat them exactly the same. Um, now, now, what do we do with this newfound knowledge? We've got, we've got an extreme one or nine on the bottom Nabna, Nabna along with a two or a four and a six or an eight. <laughs> this is horribly complicated. And if I could put five, if I could put five on this line, I could knock, knock four and six from this. So this would be then two or eight. And, but that doesn't tell us the nature of green even. That would just tell us that this digit was four or six, but we still wouldn't know whether green, we're never going to know whether, stop trying to work out whether digits are high or low, Simon. That is a fool's errand. What do we say? So one of these, one of these is from the high pair. One of these is from the low pair. Right. Okay, so this line is where we need to look, isn't it? We said earlier this line doesn't have five on it, and that's true. So it's got two low digits and two high digits, but in selecting the two low digits, one of these is a two or a four. So how could you make this line work without one? If, if, if you didn't have one on the line, You can't do it. That's, that's a slight, it's slightly weird to think about, but it is true. You can't do it. Because the, if you don't have one on the line, you're selecting two of the digits, two, three, and four. And you could, you can then say, oh, well, that's fine. I'll select the two and the four, please. Well, you could select the two and the four, but you will break one of those squares, which is a two. One of these is a two or a four. That's for sure, because one of these is two, a two, four pair. So this is very difficult to understand, but I'm now, th I'm now, and that logic, by because the Nabnas don't understand the difference, works for the nine as well. So there is a one and a nine on this line, which means there's no two and there's no eight on this line. But I don't think I know. This is very difficult, isn't it? What about this line? Do we know anything about this line? Because this is, again, where I think 2 to 10th might have put something into the puzzle. Let me think about this. We know, we know this can't be all the even digits. That would break that one. Um, I wonder if it's something to do with ones and nines. If I know this line has ones and nines on it, if this line also had to have ones and nines on it, then because you can only put one one and one nine into those six cells, that would be a one nine pair. That line would then be a four cell Nabna line selected from the digits two to eight. And that would have to be an even line. It would have to be two, four, six, eight. That's the only way of doing it. That would give us a quadruple in this row. So that does feel, that, that feels quite an interesting line of inquiry. So why does this line have to have It 
if it, well, it no, it it definitely has at least one one or nine on it because if it didn't, if there was no one and no nine on this Nabna line, it would have to be two four six eight, and that would break this square. So there definitely is a one or a nine or possibly both on this line. So we've nearly got it, I think. Now, if it's got both, well, no, it's, it's more, it's more trying to disprove it can only have one. If it's got one, let's just imagine it's got a one on it then. So it's got a one on it. Now there's a one here by Sudoku in one of these. Now this line can't have a one on it at all. So this is this line. But this is where this gets really awkward. It gets so awkward. Because even when you knock a digit out of the sequence one to nine, an extreme digit, you still don't know very much about the four cell Navna that results. Because you, if we knock one off the line, We've got to have one of two or three, one of four and five, one of six and seven, one of eight and nine. But that there are ways of doing that unless you can knock a second extreme digit off. Like if you then knock two off, then you've got to have three, five, seven, nine on the line. But if you don't knock two off and you pick the two, you could then have still have either four or five on the line. Ah, uh, it's just these things are very difficult very difficult to understand. Okay, so this line has one or nine on it, but I don't think I know, or both. It has both. This line can't have one or nine on it. It has to be two, four, six, eight. There would be a two, four, six, eight quadruple in row five. <laughs> okay. All right. I am now abandoning this line of inquiry for a curious reason. Ah, that's very interesting. And I can't, I can't, I can't use this logic in a positive way, but I will tell you it because it's amusing. I do know that this is not 2468 now I think about it. And that's because why is that yellow line there in box six? It's unnecessary. If this was 2468, this yellow line doesn't do anything because it's impossible to make these consecutive digits. So this yellow line shouldn't be here. It's superfluous. And I'm pretty sure it's not going to be superfluous to the puzzle because these lines would always, or these di digits are always incapable of being consecutive if no even digit is available to them. So actually we know using that, that, that little rinky dink, we know that this doesn't have one and nine on it. But that in turn suggests this was the wrong line of inquiry. Um, this is not the next step in the puzzle. That's interesting. That's interesting. So we have, we've got to abandon that line of thought. I, I won't be able to prove there's a one and a nine on this line because there isn't. The reason I know there isn't is to do with the, this this not being a superfluous digit. But, you know, it, it, in terms of how the puzzle has been put together, I'm absolutely sure I, this is not a question I should be asking. Um, so we, we've got to go back, I think, to these probably columns one, two and three somehow. Um, but that... so difficult to understand though isn't it if this if this is one what are we saying if, with this, if this is one so if we if we force the nab lines to understand size we could do that by making that one then we know this is one two three four we know this is a six eight pair We 
we we know we know that's high don't we so we know that's seven and nine on this one this is seven nine in that in that situation oh, i find this so difficult to actually visualize because you're, you're having to visualize so many numbers you know what what do we know with that situation if this is seven nine there are some digits then that are that's one sorry i realized i've stopped talking it's because i'm stuck <laughs> it's a short answer um This would be one three. That would be one. There would be a one on this line, so there wouldn't be a two on. Yeah, you see, look, it's interesting. It's interesting. You see, by pontificating about the value of this, you do learn things, but they're quite remote things that are quite difficult to spot. For example, if this is one rather than nine, then You've got to put one down here by Sudoku, which means two can't go on this line. Well, where does two go in this column then? Two has to go here, which means there's no two here, which means one of these squares is a four. And in fact, you would know if you did make this one, the four would be there. Uh, you see this? Yeah, this is. So you, I'm starting to be able to see how you how you can you can actually make logical deductions, but I'm doing them always based off a premise yeah I, I'm almost tempted you know to, to use this as a placeholder because because the Nabna line doesn't understand the size of a digit we can we can think of the logic that we do with the Nabna lines in this puzzle as completely linear by picking but if we pick this square as being a one and then work through the puzzle, everything we do on the Nabna lines will be, you know, all the logic we find in terms of forcing things to be non-consecutive, we'll all, we'll all just, it'll be simpler to understand because we won't be dealing with if this is high or if this is low as the starting question. But all of the logic will still be the same will then end up in the end with something going on here which will either tell us that we were right that this was a one or it'll tell us that actually that should have been a nine and if that should have been a nine we'll then have to take we'll then have to deduct from 10 every digit in the grid so all the all the ones will become nines all the twos will become eights all the threes will become sevens all the fives will stay the same and and then we'll we would find the solution but but the reason I'm tempted to do that is it will prevent me. Well, I just think it's going to be easier to present the logic from the puzzle because otherwise we've got to keep saying otherwise, because I've now proved actually that this is a four or a six. It is an intermediate digit. And the way to see that is to make this a nine. There's a nine down here, so there can't be an eight on this line. So the eight has to be here, which means these aren't eight. But if we do make this a nine, we know that this is seven, nine, this is one, three, this is six, eight. So, uh, so now I've lost my train of thought. So the, uh, the eight has to go up here, didn't it? So this would then have to be the six. So it's, it's completely, hopefully you can see that. It is completely identical logic. By making this one or making this nine, the logic didn't change one iota. It was just I was doing that logic with high digits rather than low digits. So the logic that we'll be able to find in the puzzle will be preserved whether I whether I make this square a one or a nine. Everything we deduce from that will, will be the same, but we won't have to preface everything well with whether this is high or whether this is low. So I'm going to try that. Um, if that's one, then we know that this is definitely one three. We know that this is seven nine. 
Now we know from our earlier logic, this is 6, 8, 7, 9. This is 2. So now we've got 6, 8 here. Sorry, we've got, we're getting rid of 6, 8 here. We're getting rid of 2, 4 here. We're getting rid of 1s here. So this all becomes... In a way, I hope this fails, to be honest. And it fa fails in the sense that... It, because I know there will be some people who won't be convinced um, by using this as a placeholder. But it, it, it is true. Hopefully I've explained it clearly enough. Um, but if it... And, and if, it, if I went to the end and this digit was bigger than this digit, then the puzzle will be solved. And people will go, ah, but you guessed. You made that a one. That was luck. <laughs> well, not really, actually. I totally disagree with that. But um, because... because you know, had I, had, had I picked 9 there, I'd have worked it through and this would have been an incorrect inequality and I'd have then just subtracted um, every digit in the puzzle from 10 and that would have given me the correct solution. Um, so anyway, <laughs> anyway, let's now try and see what the Nabna lines tell us once we've removed the, the first question, which is um, the highness, highness or lowness of a particular cell. So, so right, so now, now this square is definitely high. Uh, we definitely know there's a 1 on this line, which means there can't be a 2 on it. So the 2 in this column is now here, which means this square becomes a 4, which means there is now a 4 on this line, which means that this square here doesn't have a 4 on it, obviously. Um, Well, you see, right, this is immediately fantastic. It's fantastic. It, it, this, this would have been so hard to see any other way. Look, this is now 235 triple. And now, well, I can't make that a 2-3 pair on the same line. That, w that simply won't work. And this it, is beautiful. It's just beautiful. And this is all to do... Not, so everything we're doing now is to do with the logic we can get from the Nabna lines because had had we put 9 here, what we would have had on this, in this sequence would have been 8, 7, 5 and then we couldn't have made this 8, 7. So either way round, we're proving there's now a 5 on this line to stop it being a consecutive sequence and it stops it being a consecutive sequence, puts 5 on the line, makes this square not able to be 6. That's got to be 8 because there's a 5 on the line now. So this is eight, this is six, which means we now we now somehow have worked out that this is always going to be a two eight pair. Um, these squares are now something one, four, and six, I think. See that's that's really cool. Yeah, well, it is really cool. It is really cool because now I know what that line is. Because all of a sudden, all of the three middle digits have just been lumped, have been thrown in the bin. We can't put them on this line anymore. So the only way you can make this a sequence of non-consecutive digits is make them all odd and, and not have the five on them. So these are now two. This is a two eight pair. Ah, this is the way to do the puzzle. Because now what's that digit? Well, one thing it's not is a two. Because if it was two, that square will be consecutive with it. It will be three. So that's got to be eight. That's got to be two. Now, what does that mean? Eight is quite restricted in this box now. Eight is in one of those two cells. That feels like it might be important. Feels like I'm being asked something about sevens and nines down here, but I'm not sure what that, that is exactly. What about this line? This line hasn't got... This line has got two on it, so it doesn't have one or three on it. But it... And it doesn't have eight on it. Does it have to have nine on it? Probably. If it didn't have nine on it, we'd be selecting from four, five, six, and seven, four, five... No, that's not enough. Uh, you, you, we can't make... can't pick three digits from four, five, six, and seven and make 
make none of them consecutive. That's not going to work, is it? So there must be a 9 on here, which seems to mean that that's a 9 and that's a 7. So there's now no 7 on this line. And there's no 8. I feel like I know what this line is. Does it have to be? Let me just go through this. Oh, I'm so bad at these lines. Right, so we could put 4 on it. Well, we could put four, five, or six on it. They're the only things that we can now put on this line. But obviously we can't put five on it because four and six would then be unavailable. So that line is four, six, nine. It doesn't do anything over there, actually. That's weird. Isn't that strange? Um... Well, that's okay. That's knocking nine out of this square. Ah, sorry. Okay, I'm stuck. <laughs> um, okay, what about? It's probably this line in some way that I don't understand. There's now no nine on this line. So, okay. So if there was no 8 on this line, it would be broken, wouldn't it? It must have 8 on it. Because if there was no 8 on it, it would be 1, 3, 5, 7. It would be the only way of filling it, and that's going to break that square. So there is an 8 on this line, which means this is a 2, which means this is an 8. Now. So now there's no 7 on this line, which means 7 is in one of those two squares, which means 7 is not here. This is lovely. It's actually really lovely, this. There's no 7 on this line. Okay, and I've got to avoid. Well, so, so surely I can just run that logic again. How could there not be a 6 on this line now? If there's no six on the line, the line has the other digits on the line have to be one, three, five, and that's going to break that as well. So there is a six on the line, which means there's now there's now no five on the line. So the five, this is a weird five seven pair, I think. Oh, that doesn't do that one though. Okay, but now in this box, somehow or other, this is a one three pair. That's really strange, but it seems to be true, which means I've got a 1-3 pair here, which means I actually know what these digits are. These digits are 4, 6 and 8. Ah, 4, 6 and 8 in the middle, no less. 4, 6, 8. They are definitely not. Well, OK, so 4 is on the line. So definitely 3 isn't. So that's 1, that's 3. This is one. This is three. I've realized my microphone's moving around again today. Sorry. I'm just going to... That's much better. Now it's not Now it's not floating in the air. Now, this is going to be the, the kicker. Is this line now conceivably necessary? We've got two... <laughs> yes, is the answer. We've got two, three, and five to place. Well, this can't be two, three. This is what this line is here for. It's to tell us there's a five on this line. So that's not that's not five. Mm, okay. That's probably that's probably not. Um Okay, let's let's change tack. Where's eight in row seven? And the answer is I don't really know, but it is on that line by Sudoku because it can't repeat on its own nav in the line and can't go there by Sudoku. So eight is on this line, which means seven and nine. Oh, that's oh, that's beautiful. Again, this 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 it's really it brings out the logic. You can see it so much more clearly than if we were dealing with this square is a two or an eight. So you know. And in that, if, if this was two or eight, this would have lots more options. And it would be, it'd be much harder to see how clean this is. Look, where are seven and nine in this row? 
They can't be on this line because that line's got 8 on it. They can't be on those two, two squares because there's an 8 on this line. So that's a 7 or a 9. That's a 7 or a 9. 7 or a 9 cannot go with 8. Ah, this is beautiful. So that's an 8, which means 8. Ah, oh, this. Look, 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 look at this. This is sick. So now 8 is on this line, so it can't have 7 on it. So that's 5. That's 7. So five. Oh yeah, this is great. This is great. Where does five go in this box? Boom, boom. Can't repeat on its own line. So five is on this line here, which means five is it's in one of those squares. Um, there may be more we can do with that. Let me think for a second. Not sure. Um, this can't be seven or nine now. Okay, so seven and nine in this box. Or maybe it's just seven. I'm not sure. I thought there might be something we could do with seven or nine in box eight, but I can't see it now. So it could it could be this line is where we're meant to look. Um, do we think that's true? It probably is, isn't it? Let's have a think. So this line here, it hasn't got 9 on it. So 9 in this column is either exactly there, or it's on the line here, which would put 9 and 7 on this line. But that's fine, 9 and 7 are not consecutive. Um, four and six. I uh, don't know how to do that. Hmm. Okay, I'm stuck a bit again, I'm afraid. So four and six can't go on that line. One. Do we know something about where one goes in this box? I don't think so. One could very much go there. Um, okay, no, all right, I'm stuck again, aren't I? Naughty Simon. Um, perhaps. Hmm. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know where to look. Sorry. Uh, Where do we think? I feel. I mean, at least, at least, I feel that there are a couple of places where it's possible we're meant to be looking. There's, there's lots of stuff going on down here. I just can't get my head around something that yields a, a, a sort of a clean resolution of the logic. And there's clearly some stuff going on in box two as well. So I think it's box two or box eight or just possibly this line along here is, is where we need to be thinking. Um, but that all being said. Yeah, okay, so, I mean, cells like this, for example, they're under more pressure than one might at first realise. They are, actually, that is under more pressure, isn't it? Because that, that digit, because it, it can't cause this to be consecutive with it, it can't be a 2, because if that's a 2, that's a 3, and that breaks this line. So this digit, which could, but I think it could be 4, but I'm not sure. I think it could be four. That would force this to be two. I don't think there's a four looking at this. Four, five is the same. Oh no, five, it, five, five is on this line. It's not five. Five, so it's not five. Could it be six? Because if it can't be six, I know it can't be seven or nine. So this is four or six.
Not sure. Okay. So that's four or six. I don't know. All right, let's try that one. Well, no, this is big. Oh, that's it. That's it. Got it. I, I, we don't have to go any further because if that's four or six, that can't be five. Ah, oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. So that's not five either. I'm now seeing. So five is up here. Five is on this line, which means that four and six in this row. Well, that the problem is that one could be four or six, couldn't it? Hmm. OK, so we're not quite there yet. But I think I think what I've got to do is explore this digit. So this digit, what are its options? It's definitely not. I think it might be able to be one, annoyingly. It can't be two, can't be three, because that's going to make consecutiveness problems. Presumably it can be four then, can it? I think it can. Uh, it can't be five, we've just worked out can be six I think that's gonna I think we're gonna end up with a one four six triple yeah okay so that's a one four six triple in this row and there may be ways that we can we can improve upon that but I can't I don't they're not immediately occurring to me so in fact one of these digits so these digits are from two three five and eight for sure one of them is a two or a three So this digit, which is not 789, it's not 654, so that digit has to be a 1. I'm, so, I'm sort of pausing there because that's such an extraordinary thing, to me at least. It can't be 2 or 3, or we've got a 2-3 pair on the thing. It can't be from 4, 5 or 6 because we've got 5 on it. It can't be from 7, 8 and 9 because we've got 8 on it. So it is a 1. And that means this is not a 1. I have a feeling that's not going to do nearly as much as we're going to... I actually need it to. Um, let's think. Let's think. Um... Don't know. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, it could be about. That digit is the same as that digit, which is not there. So that digit is down in one of these two squares. This digit, I think, could go down here. Why can't this be a five seven nine triple? No, no reason I'm immediately seeing. Um, all right, okay, all right. Well, we're still we're still in the game. We're still in the game, and we're just stuck. <laughs> we have to we have to come up with some better logic. Where is where is the better logic? Um, It would be, if that was four, six, that would make that two. That would be three, five, eight on the right hand side. That would be fine. Is it something to do with, I don't think it is to do with this. It's very possible I've missed, I've missed something on a line somewhere. And, you know, I haven't eliminated a possibility because the logic got incredibly crisp, didn't it? A moment or two ago. And now, I feel like I've I've sort of backtracked a bit. One one in box eight is mildly restricted. Again, I can't see why it can't go on the Nabna. Why can't this be a one? That would put a one up there. Is that a problem? Don't think so. Hmm. So, so we're busy asking the wrong questions all of a sudden. 
How disappointing. What could it be? Uh, <laughs> and this is the usual problem with these lines, is that once you get, once I get stuck, I really, I really struggle to get myself out of the, out of the sort of fug, the fug of these, these digits. Is it something to do with four and six in, um, in this box? So this line is not allowed to have four or six on it. Which, which feels a little bit interesting. Um, no, it feels like six is, is so I mean, six is not in any of those three squares, is it? I am no I am noticing as a result of that logic. So six is either in the very middle of the grid or it's in one of those two squares where it would it would force these two squares to be a four one pair. And that would force Oh, that doesn't work. Oh of course, right, sorry. There's a, there's a problem here. I can't have one and four in these squares, can I? Because then that square's got no no fill, because it can't be two then or three. So there is a six in one of these two squares. Okay, I didn't know that before. So that's not six. So this line has six on it. So so okay, and because the, because this line has six on it, those squares are not six. These squares are not six, and that is a six in the middle of the grid. Wow, that was that was tricky. Um, now, does that help us to learn more about the world, though? I don't know. <laughs> um, it might do if that felt like a reasonable deduction. Um, there is a six on this line. So if that's so, in fact, if that's six, then that's six at the top of the grid, and we would be on our way into another Nabna line over here, which would feel and that would feel like it mattered. What about? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I keep I keep feeling as well like I'm going through all of the same thought processes I've just been through. So if this line if this is a one, this is a three. If there is a four on here, this is a two. Yeah, that this is this is this is the wrong train of thought. Um Okay, I'm sorry. I'm I am trying. I, <laughs> I know some of you will be thinking, why can't you see it? It's not for lack of trying, believe me. Um, let me think. Perhaps there's perhaps there's more I can do with this line. Let me think about that line. Okay, five. Okay, four and six we know are not allowed to be on this line. It is this line, isn't it? It's obvious. Oh, Simon, you're such a numpty. Uh, it's just, it's just, I mean, it's, I don't know what to say other than, although maybe, no, I am wrong. I'm wrong. You can't put six on the line. Oh, it's obvious. I'm so sorry, everybody. I'm just, in, I it almost makes me want to turn off the video. Oh gosh, what's wrong with you? I get hung up on such complicated things and it's so beautiful and simple. Oh, I'm appalled. Right. Okay. Sorry. I'm so sorry, 2 to 10th. I feel, I feel terrible. This line is, is much more restricted than I'm, I'd first realized. Look, I don't know how I didn't see this. So there's a five on this line. So it hasn't got four or six on it. It's not got seven on it, but it has got eight on it. So it doesn't have nine on it. 
So the digits that these, the other two digits that are not eight on this line are selected from low digits that are not, that are one and three only. It, it can only be, because it can't have four on the line. It must be a one, three, eight, triple. Uh, it probably doesn't do anything. I, I would be quite pleased in a way if it didn't. Um, that's now not able to be one. I've now got a four, six pair here, which fixes. This is two. Oh, it does do things. This is now one. Um, Oh dear, I've let myself down horribly there. <sighs> C'est la vie. Um, all right. So what do we what do we now know? I'm really. I mean, it's, it's really, you know, the other thing. Oh, where's? Well, look now. Oh, it's so simple. It's beautiful again. It's beautiful again. Where do four and six go in box um, box two? They can't go on the line, so they've got to go there. And that's a seven, so this is a four. It's beautiful. The logic is absolutely crystal clear. Six, four, four, nine. There's now a nine on this line. Um, this six is going to be potent in in terms of that that sequence as well. What do we need in this column? We need two, five, two, five, and seven, I think. Okay, let's let's put in all of the options and see if we can do any better than that. Um, Mm, two, five, and seven are not consecutive digits. We know there's a nine on here. Well, yeah, okay. I mean, we, we know we know the contents of this line, don't, don't we? They are two, five, seven, and nine. Therefore, we can knock five out of here. And... Can we do better than that? So there's a two, seven, nine triple. So where do one and three go in this column? That's a question we could have asked. So one and three go there, which is resolved by the one here. So we get a three on this line, which is doing a three and a five, which is giving me a five on this other line. Keep going now. Uh, that five is knocking a five out of this square, oh, which we actually already knew about. I just didn't spot it. And this square is two, seven. Oh, it's not seven, it's two or nine. Let's try and type in the right digits. It's not two. Right, that's nine, that's seven, that's two. That's seven, that's nine. Two comes off this line, so we can get rid of the corner pencil marks. We've got three, five, and eight on the line. Um, fours and sixes don't seem to be resolved at the bottom, which is a bit strange. Uh, we've got two, four, these are, well, okay, so this is, these are, for, oh God, I can't type now. My brain's totally gone. Right, that's got to be a two. This can't be a two because it would repeat on its Navna. That seems to give me a three here, which means I've got a two five pair all of a sudden in box six. That's not able to be three anymore. No three in the corner. Although I guess, I guess um, we could get a three in the corner here, but I'm also thinking we could have permutations involved in the finished solution, which might mean that any three in the corner we get is either earned or unearned, if you see what I mean. Now, this square um, is, I don't know, I don't know. I've lost the ability to think four, six, seven, nine, and we can take off seven, nine because of the eight. We can take off four because of the three. So that's got to be a six. Oh, this is bad. That does it. Look, six, four go into the grid. So this is seven, nine now. That's a four by Sudoku. I've got a seven, nine pair in this column. I've got, I've got a rumbling tummy. I've got an eight there, which means that's not eight. Can we do better now? So now I've got a two at the bottom. Okay, so, so now we've got a five, seven pair here, which means this is a um, a two, nine pair, I think. Why, why is it doing that? I want to get rid of the seven. And get rid of the two and nine corner marks. And hopefully, have a look across here. Yeah, oh, look, there's some more Sudoku we can do. Four, two. Although that doesn't get me into my two, nine pair. So four. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So four is um, up here. It's on the it's on the on the inequality sign. Which way do we think that's going to go? If the four's here, it looks very easy for this to be. Well, no, it's not very easy. I've got a seven nine pair here. 
Hmm. If that's four, that would be a one. That's of course if the if the inequality is going to be the correct as a result of us putting the one into this square. We don't know that yet. Um now what about okay where does six go in this box is an interesting question so six can't repeat on its own nabness oh this is great this is great this is going to get me the inequality because now that's a six that's a four and that's moving four here oh oh no it's wrong <laughs> okay we've got well uh, this is well this is good this is good Okay, so what we've now suddenly learned, I didn't see this one before, is that that square has no possible fill if we're going to make the inequality correct. So, so what we did, or what I did when I started with the one here, was incorrect. It's not incorrect, it was used as a placeholder. But actually what we've now learned, as a result purely of the inequality, None of the logic we've done would have been would have changed. The only way I, I, I mean, it's definitely true. The only way some of you may be able to convince yourselves of that is to go back to the point at which I made this uh, a one, make it a nine, but run all of my logic identically. Identically, you will find it all works. Just whenever I say the number, I don't know. Whenever I say the number four, imagine I said the number six. Whenever I said the number three, imagine I said the number seven, etc., etc. You will find everything worked. Um, but okay, so now the question is, what do we do? I think what we do is we continue as if nothing is wrong, because then we're going to finish the puzzle. Um, and then we can just replace every digit in the puzzle with 10 minus that digit and that will give us the correct solution. So we will ignore this inequality, we will not use the logic inherent in it and keep going. Um, now, I say that, but that does rely on us being able to keep going. So perhaps these two digits are where we look because they can't be seven, nine. So in terms of this column, we've got twos, threes, fives and eights to place. And that's interesting because five can't go on the line and only one of two or three can go on the line. So eight is on the line, which means this square is not an eight, which seems to mean that square is an eight. Also, let's have a look at now where eight goes in row one of the grid. It's not there and it's not there, so it must be here. So that's eight. We get a one, three pair here. Now, does this keep going? Sort of a floating two, three, five triple in this column. Don't look at that inequality sign. It's not relevant, Simon. Um, okay. Well, maybe that digit even that might be under some pressure now. Uh, we know that we know we've got eight on the line, so we haven't got seven, nine, and we haven't got five because of the six here, so, and we haven't got four. So this is a low. It's a low digit. It's one, two, or three, but it obviously can't be two or three, or we will have a problem. So it is one, which forces this to be a three-eight pair. Ah, oh, this is. Uh, it's just, I can totally and utterly appreciate why people are in awe of this puzzle. It is absolutely phenomenal. Look, it's just filling itself in. Eight, six. Six goes there now. Um, I must have done, must have done loads of stuff in this row now, surely. I just don't want to colour anything in. Uh, five, seven or nine. Well, that is seven or nine, which means this is five, which means this is seven. That's no longer seven. So it's two, three, or nine. That can't be two or three, so that's nine. Nine, two, three here. Um, nine here. Seven here. Uh, seven here. That's now a nine, I think. That's seven, that's one. That's seven, that's nine. This column hasn't got five in it. <laughs> um, and what else have we got now? We've got a two here. And that is obviously incorrect. Oh no, hang on, I've got two fives in the top row. What have I done wrong there? I've got, oh, I've got two threes. In. Oh dear, something's, oh, hang on, I've done something wrong, sudoku -y. Let me just go back to wherever. Oh no, that cell, ah. No, something went wrong. Something went wrong, where though? 
don't know. It's sort of hard to tell, isn't it? It didn't feel like it was wrong at all. Maybe I misclicked. Where did I... I felt that that one was well earned. That seemed very sensible. And then... Okay, let's just go back a bit further. So the one gave me a one there, three there, three there, eight there. I can now see I could have put a three in the corner. Okay, but we've got to... Well, in fact, that is, that is a song we cannot celebrate. Because we know that this is... We know that's going to be a seven in the finished solution. Because this inequality is wrong. So we can't sing for the three in the corner, which is a terrible, terrible thing. That feels completely wrong. I'm worried I've got the puzzle wrong anyway. I've got to put a six here. Um... Okay, what, what's going wrong here, if anything? One, two, three, four. Five here, six. I'm just sort of checking that I've got some Sudoku going on in the relevant places. Um, okay, so what now? I've got to put two, seven, and nine into this column. That can't be a one. That's a seven or a nine, so that seems to have to be a two, two, nine. I don't think this is, di oh, it is different there, look. That's got to be a seven now. Well, that does, I don't know what I got up there before, but it wasn't that. One goes here, that's now a nine. That's a nine, that's a seven, that's a seven, that's a five. What's that then? Five. Ah, okay, well, this is, it's still obviously wrong, but it's now not necessarily sudoku wrong now I, I can't click tick because if this has got the solution in it it will say it's wrong so what i just want to take a moment now just to stare at this before i start implementing any adjustments to the grid can i see any problems here The answer is, I don't know. I don't think there's a problem. We almost need a button to press to check for whether the Sudoku... Because if the Sudoku's right, I think the logic was good that we used. So now we get... Well, this is, this is phenomenal as well. Because... Yeah, this is fine. Because when we correct the grid, I am going to get a three in the corner there, which is a legitimate three in the corner. Um... Because because now what we need to do, obviously, what, obviously what, what our logic, because this inequality is wrong, we are being told that this needed to be a nine, ab initio. So what mm, the trouble here is going to be, yeah, we need to, I need to do this a bit carefully. I'm going to get rid of all colouring in the grid because I might have to colour. Actually, maybe I can do it a different way. So all of these ones need to become nines but i'm conscious that if i now press nine and make them all nines i'll have 18 nines in the grid and i won't know which which nines would need to become ones so i'm actually going to do it differently i'm going to make all of these zeros and now i can double click the nines and make those ones and now i can go back to the digit that was originally one and make that nine so now the ones and the nines have been correctly adjusted so we will now go to the twos so the twos need to all become eight so we'll make those zeros we'll make the eights into twos we'll make the zeros into eights um, and that should be good now we'll go for the threes so the threes will make them zeros the sevens will make and that's three in the corner. <laughs> that's three in the spotlight. Losing its religion. That three is justified. Let's go back to the zeros and make them sevens. Um, so what have we done now? We're now on fours, I think. So fours will make those zeros. Sixes will make those fours. Zeros will make sixes. And look now. Look at our inequality. It's now correct, unsurprisingly. Um and the five stay the same. So I think that is the correct solution. Boom! <laughs> what a comedy, what a comedy, comedy ending. Um, 
That's brilliant. That is brilliant. Averaging about four people a day solving that. That's fantastic. I'd love to know whether other people are doing it that way. Um, I think that is by far the simplest way of solving that. Because if you tried to do that as prefacing every question with if this is high or low, it would be so much harder to spot some of these relationships that we were able to just immediately hone in on. And you could really bring out the logic. Now, I have big apologies to make to two to tenth for this line and not being able to. I'm so sorry. I mean, that's wasted everybody's time. I feel awful about that. I, I don't know why my brain didn't understand it, see it concentrate on it in the right way um, and for that well words fail me um, but anyway uh, it was it's a really really interesting solve <laughs> with some fabulously beautiful logic um, and I'll be intrigued to read the comments on this one in, in many ways um, but thank you very much for watching it's another quite long video um, but a puzzle that absolutely justifies um, a showcase on the channel because that is something else altogether and someday we'll meet again um, I hope <laughs> back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic <laughs>